Hi and welcome to day two of the elements. Now I'm going to be doing not helium, which is number two. You'd think day two, do number two, atomic number two. No, I'm not going to. I'm going to do lithium. Now, the reason I'm going down the groups is because it is paramount to understanding the elements because every single element in the groups, they have similar properties. Now, the table was put together. Finally, there was a lot of people involved in building uh, the table, but it was Dmitry Mendeleev, a Russian scientist, 150 years ago, here he is, who was the person who finally put the table together in pretty much the format that you see now. And what helped him put the table together is he laid out all the elements that were known and he put them underneath each other if they had similar chemical properties. And that was the clue to understanding uh, the table and building it the way that we can see today. So all the elements here, lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium and francium, they all have similar chemical properties. They're very reactive. You have to contain them in oil. If they're exposed to air or especially water, they will explode virtually, especially cesium. Not francium, because no one's got enough francium together to uh, do any experiments. I'll come back to that. So they're all reactive. You don't find them by themselves in nature. They're always joined to something else because they're so reactive. Now, the first thing to mention is he's walking on water and there's a lilac flame underneath his feet. It is the lightest metal. Um, generally speaking, all the metals are on this side, non-metals, sort of this area onwards. That's for another day. Can you see the way, um, the background? Let's have a look at the background. Now this is fun, I like this. There is three characters on the table, boron, beryllium and lithium. They all have a similar background. That is because when they first analysed how much um, of these three elements there was on Earth, there was more than what there should have been. And they didn't know why. And it's because of a thing called, I love this, cosmic ray spallation. Don't freak out. Here we go. I'm going to give you a demonstration of cosmic ray spallation. Let's break it down. Cosmic, anything from outer space. A ray. Whoa. A ray. Spallate is this. I'm going to spallate these two cards. Are you ready? Whoa, 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 whoa. It's my special effects uh, guy getting over enthusiastic. Enough. Whoa. Last one. No more, please. So cosmic ray spallation is where rays from the cosmos are continuously coming down and changing one element into another. So that's why there's more of these three on Earth than what there should be. So he's walking on water, there's a lilac flame. If you notice all these elements, I've put some kind of flame on the background because they're all super reactive. The word lithium comes from lithos, which means stone. It's a Greek word because that's where the mineral that they use to get the lithium from. And he's also looking a bit sort of uh, um, a bit depressed because they use lithium salts to treat bipolar disorder. And lithium, but its number one use is three quarters of the lithium that's dragged out of the ground is used to make batteries. So everything from drills, pads, iPads, phones. This is being filmed on my phone, which is being run by a lithium battery. So there you go, there's lithium. Uh, tomorrow we'll be doing sodium. Thanks for watching and uh, see you next time. Bye bye.